Next, we're going to talk about something that's called the power pivot. The power pivot is a very powerful tool in Excel, and it's going to allow you to do go a little bit further with your pivot table. Let me show you some of the benefits of the power pivot. One of the benefits is you'll be able to make a pivot table from more than one sheet if the sheets have a common field. So it actually gets into a little bit of relational database now. So I'm going to go back onto my sheets on this workbook. And you can see because of what we've done in these different sessions, this one has a lot of sheets, right? But I'm going to go way back and I'm looking for a sheet that's called customers and orders. All right, here's customers and orders. Now, in order for the power pivot to work, um, the, the data has to be a formatted table. So let's format that as a formatted table. So I'm going to click on one of these cells on the customer sheet, and then I'll pick on the home menu, of course, home, and I'll pick on format as a table. And I'm going to pick on, you know, one of these. I like the style over here so that every other row will be that shade of color. Good. Now make sure on this window, you check where it says my table has headers. Notice up here, we do have the headers. So I'm gonna click on OK. This is a formatted table, right? Now you wanna give the table a better name. It'll just work out better if you do. So when I click on the formatted table, I'll pick on the design menu up top, we see design. Now here I'm gonna give it a better table name. So I'll type in customers there, good and I hit the enter key so that it sticks. We formatted that sheet as a table and we gave the tables a better name. Let's do the same thing on the orders sheet. So I'll pick on orders. Right now it's just raw data. So then to format that as a table, I'll pick on the home menu, home, format as a table. Again, I'll go with that style. And you make sure it is checked where it says my table has headers. I'll click on okay. So this is a formatted table, right? Let's give the table a better name. See how we have the design menu. And then up here, I'll type in orders. So we formatted both of those sheets as a table and we gave the tables a better name. Notice how the order sheet has a field that's called customer ID and the customer sheet has a field that's called customer ID. So because those two sheets have a common field, we're going to be able to make a, a, a pivot table based on both of those um, sheets. So to use the power pivot, the two sheets have to have a common field and they have to be formatted as a table. Now, if you'll notice, I have a menu up there that's called power pivot, and we're going to use that in the next few minutes. If you don't have that menu, let me show you how you turn it on. So I'll pick on the file menu, file, and then options, right? And we go back to our options. First of all, let's make sure the power pivot is available for you. So I'll pick on the add-ins over here. And then we're going to come down here and pick on com add-ins. See it? Com add-ins. And I'll pick on go. Make sure the word power pivot is checked right there. Make sure it is checked and I'll click on OK. Sometimes that will turn on the power pivot menu. Now, if you did that step and the power pivot menu is still not there, then we'll do one more step. We'll pick on the file menu. I'll pick on options again. This time I'll pick on customize ribbon. Remember the ribbon is a new word for the toolbar. Then over here, you make sure the word power pivot is checked. All right, so we'll check that. And now the word power pivot should be up there on your menu. So we're gonna use the power pivot. So one of the benefits of the power pivot is we can make a pivot table from more than one sheet if they're formatted as tables and if they have a common field. Let's give that a shot. So I'm going to start with the customer sheet and you can see we made it into a formatted table a couple minutes ago. So it's going to start off as a normal pivot table. I'll pick on the insert menu and then pivot table, insert pivot table. Good. Notice how it's coming from the customer's table. So it's okay to make the pivot table come from a formatted table, that's fine. But here's the really important choice. As soon as we say add the data to the data model, it, that's when it becomes a power pivot. That's the important step right there among all the other steps that we've been doing. So I'll click on okay, good. It looks like a normal pivot table 
except for one big change. Over here, I'm going to pick on the word all. All right. So now you'll see I'll be able to make the pivot table, not only just from the Excel sheets, but also from the sheets that we pulled in from, uh, here's the one we, we pulled in from the CSV file and from the Access databases and so on. So now we can actually pull the data in from the different sheets, even uh, the ones that we pulled in from other sources, as long as they're formatted tables, which they are. So let's start with the customer sheet. That's the table name, by the way. That is not the sheet name. That is the table name. So I'm going to pick up company name and drag it over into the rows. Good. So each row became a different company name. That field came from the, uh, from the customer sheet. Now watch my mouse. I'm going to come over here to the right and scroll down. Now I'm going to expand the orders table. Then I can pull fields from the orders table and I'll use order amount. All right, so I'll pick up order amount and drag it to the values. Right now, it doesn't know which orders go with which customer. Notice how it all has the same number there. So notice how we have this new section. We have to establish the relationship between those two sheets. So I'm just going to do it the manual way. I'll pick on the word create. All right, this is all part of the power pivot. So the, these are the table names, not the sheet names. So I'll pick on the orders table and we'll find the common field customer ID and I'll choose the customers table and I'll use the field customer ID. So we're looking for the common field name. Now, when you do it in real life, sometimes it's not gonna be the same field name and it doesn't have to be. As long as the data is the same, that's more important. So over here, it might be called customer ID. On this other table, it might be called customer number. As long as the data is the same, that's more important. It's always nice when the field name is the same, but it doesn't always work out that way in real life. So I'm gonna click on OK. So now watch how the numbers changed. Now it knows which customer goes with which order because of the relationship that we just established on the customer ID field. So this field came from the customers table. This field came from the orders table. These are all the orders for that customer. It knows which orders goes with that customer because of that relationship. So really for the first time, Excel becomes a relational database, a lot like Access already is. So now let's go a little bit further. Uh, let's say I want to add one of those slicers. Uh, if you look at one of the previous sections of this course, we were talking about the slicer. So I like to add a slicer by employee name. So watch how we're going to do this. This is going to be pretty fascinating. So I'm going to pick on the insert, the analyze menu, and we'll say insert slicer. Now check this out. Here's the customers and the orders table, right? Remember how the employees table came in from the access database, but when we imported that, it made that into a formatted table. So it's actually still available here. So I'll pick on all. And now we'll see all the other tables are in there as well. So I want to do by the employee's last name. Now watch. It needs to know that relationship again. So right now that's not having any effect on anything. It's not changing anything because it doesn't really know which um, customers and which orders go with which employees. Notice when I clicked in the pivot table again, then it wants to make that relationship again. Each new table that you introduce into the power pivot is going to need that relationship. So let's do that. We'll pick on create. In this case, I'll pick on the orders table and the employee ID will be the common field this time. And then here we'll pick on the employees table and we'll pick on employee ID. So those two tables have the common field employee ID. When I do that, all of a sudden the slicer is going to start to work. So I'll pick on the volio notice how the numbers changed. Each one is changing because it knows which orders go with, with employees because of that relationship. So look at the power that we have. We pulled the employees table in from the access database. It made it one of those formatted tables. I was able to pull it into the power pivot. And uh, because it had a common field, then uh, I can incorporate that into the slicer as well. So this field came from the customers table. This field came from the orders table. This field came from the 
um, from the access database, uh, which was the, um, the employees table. Pretty powerful stuff here. All right, so you can really start to tie your data together with a power pivot and the power query. Okay, good. Let's add another slicer. So what if we added um, a slicer on that shipper field? So let's try another example. I'll pick on the analyze, insert slicer. I'm going to pick on all again. And then we pulled in the, um, the shippers from the, that was a, an access database as well. Let's see if we still have that. There it is. So I want that company name for the shippers to be a slicer. Now, again, it doesn't know which shippers go with which order. So we have to create that relationship again. All right, so each new table probably will have to have this relationship built. So I'll pick on create. This time we'll use the orders table. Now this time the field is going to be a little bit different. On the orders table, they call it ship via. And then on the shippers table, it's called the shipper ID. So this time the field name is not the same. So it, it does require that you know your data a little bit here, right? So on the orders table, the field is called ship via. And over here it's called shipper ID. But I know that's really the same data. So that, that'll work for us. Click on OK. So now I can pick different combinations of the employee and the shipper, and you can see how things are changing, right? So now we have four different tables represented because of those relationships. I mean, this is really one of the huge benefits of the power pivot is you can start to um, combine your data together as long as you can find a common field to link those together. Really powerful stuff here. Good. Now let's see some benefits of the power pivot a little bit further from there. So I'm going to click on the pull the, uh, the menu where it says power pivot that we turned on before. Now here you can uh, manage uh, things like the data model. That's where you can manage the data and the relationships. A measure everybody is going to be a calculation. And then a KPI is a key performance indicator. Uh, and that's another visual tool. However, in order to have a KPI, we have to have a measure. All right, so it's just the way it works out. So just think about a measure as another calculation. So let's go ahead and pick on uh, measures there. And then I'm going to add a new calculation, a new measure. Okay, now this one's going to come from the orders table. And I'm going to call this one new sum. The, the, the field name will be called new sum. Now you're going to see if I pick on the FX here, among the measures, you're going to see many functions that you've never been exposed to before. All right. So in fact, let's do, let's do um, one that you haven't seen before. So I'll do instead of the new sum, let's do the first order date. I want to see the first time that each customer placed an order. So if I pick on the FX, then just notice some of these some of these you just haven't seen before. They're only available in this power pivot. Like I know some of these are just not available anywhere else. So you can always click on one of those and, and pick on help, you know, or uh, look it up on the, on the Google or something, but let's find one that's called, let's find that's called first date. There it is. And it's going to really be the earliest date uh, for that, for that client in this case. Then I'm going to click inside the parentheses and type in O and it'll start to show me the fields from the orders table. So I'll pick on order date. Now I can make that format a lot more complicated, but you get the point of these and we're going to make it in date format and I'll use the US date format. So let's go ahead and click on OK. So now it's going to show you the earliest order date for each different customer and each one is a little bit different. Uh, watch how we did that one again. It's called a measure. So I'll pick on measure on the power pivot window and then new measure. And then uh, this time I'll call it um, last order date. And then I'm going to pick on the FX again. And again, you're going to just see some functions that you haven't seen before, but the show would be one that's called last date. Good. And I'll type in O for the order fields and I'll use the order date. So it's called last date and I'm using the order date. 
So I'll make that the date format with the US date format. So now I have the earliest date of each customer and the most recent date for each customer. So, I mean, I bet you haven't seen those functions before. In fact, I don't think they're available anywhere else except for the power pivot. Let's do another measure. I already have a sum, so let's remove this sum. I'll pick up this sum and drag it back. I, I want to make a measure out of the sum. So then we'll do uh, a KPI once the we have the measure for the sum. So I'll pick on measure, new measure. And then this time we'll just call it a new sum. And now your classic, many of your classic functions will be there as well. So I'm just using the classic sum. I typed an O again and we'll use the order amount. And then we'll just make that currency format. And again, I'll go back to the zero decimal places. And now we have that sum there or the new sum, right? Now, the reason I did that and made it a measure is so I can make a KPI. Let's see what a KPI is. Pick on KPI and then new KPI. So uh, it's a very visual tool. It's almost like conditional formatting actually, but it goes with the power pivot. Notice how it's going to come from a measure. That's why I kept on stressing that. So I'll pick on new sum. Let me look at the numbers here. All right, so let's say if it's uh, 5,000 and below, it'll be uh, red. And if it's uh, 5,000 to 20,000, it'll be yellow. And then above 20,000 will be green. So I'm going to come over here. So let's say we'll say 15,000. Good. So then you get the scale, right? So I'm going to say 5,000 and below will be red. Let's say 5 to 15 will be yellow and above 15 will be green. So you can set the scale any way you wanted to. Now it shows up as negative 1 and positive 1. Let me show you how to really make sense of this. I remember how I put that on the orders table. So I'm going to expand the orders table. Scroll down. And there's the KPI. There's the new sum. So I'm going to expand that, uncheck status, and then check it again. And now we see the actual KPI. So the red ones means it was less than 5,000. Yellow was between yellow, uh, I mean, 5 and 15. And the green was over 15. Watch here. We did that one again. And we'll start wrapping up this session. Let's do another new measure. So I'll pick on new measure. This time we'll do a new count. And of course the count function will be there among a lot of new ones. And I'll count, it uh, doesn't really matter which field that I count, so I'll count the, uh, the order ID. And we'll just make that a number with zero decimal places. Good, so we just added the new count. Let's see where that is. I'm going to make sure that is checked. Good. So it's on now. So now let's make a KPI from there. I'll click on KPI, new KPI. It's going to come from one of those measures, right? There's the new count. And now let's say if it's a 10 or below. So I'll pick on absolute value and I'll say uh, 20. So if it's 10 or below, it'll be red. If it's between 10 and 20, it'll be yellow, and then above 20 will be green. It shows up as this negative one and positive one for some reason. So I'm gonna go back to that orders table over here, uncheck it, let's go back to that KPI. There it is. I'm gonna expand it, uncheck status, and then check it again. And now we actually see the KPI. So now we have some components working together in a nice way. We have the slicers and, um, you know, that's going to change everything. Everything is working together again. Uh, why don't we add a timeline? So I'll pick on uh, all, all the regular pivot table features will work with the power pivot. So I'll pick on analyze, insert timeline. We'll base it on the order date. And then there's that timeline again, and I'll make it by years. Wow, check it out. Now everything is working together. Remember to pick more than one from the um, slicer windows, we're gonna hold down the control key. So now the KPI is kind of a, a new component that completes the dashboard. 
So within the power pivot, I can make a pivot table from more than one table as long as we can find a common field. And you can really use as many as you wanted to. Uh, and then another benefit of the power pivot is you can add all these new measures. And there's many functions that you've never seen before. And then once we have those measures built, then we can build the KPIs as well. And then we can have the slicers and the timeline. So everything is working together and we have a beautiful dashboard. So that is what I want to show you with the KPI and the, really the power pivot.